Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another paint review. So a couple days ago, I released a video with my first impressions of the Army Speed Painter 2.0 set. And I told you guys in that video that I would be doing a separate video on just the metallics and because I think they deserve a video by themselves. I had no intention of doing that video so soon, but I got so many requests in the comments of the previous video that I decided why make you guys wait? I'll just get stuck into it now. So that's what I'm gonna do in today's video. I'm gonna be playing around with the metallics. Now, I have the complete set number two, the mega set, which isn't the complete set, at least not anymore. Uh, there, I think there's a, a new set out with a bunch more different metallic colors, but I have only access to the first three, which are in this set. So I'm gonna try all three of them out in this video. On quite a large scale as well, not gonna be just painting like one panel or whatever. And I've gotten three cool robots from uh, the sponsor of today's video, which is Proxy Wars, which I'll tell you a little bit more about them later in the video. Um, so I'm gonna be basically doing, uh, they're like Castellan robots, so one Castellan robot in each of the color schemes. Now, I'm gonna show you guys what they look like as just one solid coat just using the speed paints. And then I'm gonna show you what I would do to just kind of touch them up a little bit, which is, you know, applying a shade. I'm gonna be throwing three different shades across three different colors. And then a little dry brush of silver just to catch the edges again and uh, bring up the color. So hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have a, a clear idea of uh, how good these, um, metallic speed paints are if there's something you want to in, add to your arsenal of colors and if they're worth your time so without further ado let's get stuck into that video now before i get stuck into using the uh, army speed painter metallics i just want to talk a little bit about the sponsor of today's video these guys is proxy wars and they're the ones that sent me out these beautiful uh castellan robots now they are not the company that designs these miniatures proxy war is a fantastic company that has licenses to 3d print and sell uh, kind of other designs from other companies so these ones are particular uh, from station forge so station forge and lots of other companies out there produce amazing stl files for 3d printing every single month but not all of us have access to 3d printers to be able to make uh, use of these awesome files well that's where proxy war comes in having an absolutely colossal arsenal of files that they print for you and send to your front door at a very respectable and reasonable price. They always do fantastic work removing support and cleaning off the, the, the prints so you can straight away just start constructing them. This is the Proxy Wars website. As you can see, they have a wide variety of different things to uh, print out and use. So I definitely recommend you guys check out their website below uh, with the upcoming uh, Old World. Things like the Beastman range here are something that's going to be a huge selling point um, and going to be very useful for many people who want to get involved. Or if, like me, you are a huge colossal fan of things like the Death Corps of Creek, they have access to a huge arsenal of the Grimguard, which are once again another uh, particular set of sculpts from um, Station Forge, which basically has everything you could ever want to for building a Death Corps of Krieg army, and once again for rock bottom prices. So I have several kits from this um, to bolster out my Krieg for. So if you're interested in that, like I said, links to it below. Uh, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Thank you again, Proxy Wood, for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so now it is time for me to use these particular sculpts. I got them sprayed black and then sprayed gray sear like I do for all my printing, uh, for all my painting, sorry. And then these are the three specific paints that I have access to from the, the thing. So I've got the Hoplite Gold, the uh, Talos Bronze, and the Broadsword Silver. There is apparently a much larger range of these metallics now, as someone was telling me on my stream the other day. And I do hope to get my hands on them at some point to test them out. But these are the three that I have, so these are the three that I'm going to test. So I'm going to basically do an entire Castellan robot in each color. And give it a real test so here's the viscosity as you can see it in a little palette it is quite liquidy as it so should be being a speed paint and here's how it flows off the brush now the army speed paints are definitely a little bit thinner and i don't mean that in like potency the uh, pigment in them is quite strong and it definitely gives great coverage but they definitely flow a little bit easier off the brush and off the model than something like contrast will so that's something that i need to be made aware of i'm basically programmed to use contrast so i know exactly how much to leave where to stop pooling and to stop a little bit of that. now unfortunately i don't have that down to a fine art yet with these army speed paints i think i did a pretty good job there's definitely a few bits where it pooled a little bit but for one coat of a metallic speed paint, which only took kind of a couple of seconds to apply, it gave me a very a pleasing result. The metallic is definitely something that I wouldn't particularly leave at this, you know, this step, the gold, uh, the silver. For me, I like to shade it down. I like to layer it up a bit to add a little bit more detail to it. The Hoplite Gold, on the other hand, like I thought they were all going to be pretty much the same, but just a different color until I applied the first coat of this Hoplite Gold and... <laughs> I... 
I mean, look at it. I still can't get over it. This is like the green I used in there. A previous the sprite green or whatever for the last video that just blew me away the gold is definitely the color that blew me away making this video and that once again uh, leans into my credence that i'm like okay so if i've practiced with i don't know six or eight of the speed paint so far and two of them have absolutely blown me away i wonder what other gems are out there in that range that i need to look for as you can see the gold is applying in one thin beautiful smooth coat giving absolutely perfect coverage it's so smooth. I love it. There's definitely a, a million uses for this. And now, usually a lot of us are not putting a lot of gold onto places. Like, you know, it's usually just small parts of a model, a hilt of a sword or, you know, the trim of a shield or something like that. And with that being the case, if you're just going to use a little bit of this gold to paint those bits, I wouldn't think you would need to touch it afterwards. It's It's got all the shading already done. It's got some nice highlights done. It looks stellar. Like, it looks like I put so much work into that gold and I did not. Talos Bronze is kind of in the middle of the two. It gives a very nice solid coat, something that I would be definitely pleased with if I was using bronze. Obviously the gold is, uh, this is one of those weird things, you know, when you're talking about something and it's not that the other two are bad, it's just that the gold is so good. Do you know what I mean? So if, like, if I was to look at the bronze and the silver as paints by themselves, I would be like, these are a solid eight out of 10 kind of paint. And then you put the gold down you're like well the gold is clearly a 10 which i don't know if they're an eight maybe they're a seven or a six. the gold is so good but there has been some controversy out there as to whether or not these um speed paints actually do work i think uh, a particular youtuber talked about the concept that a metallic speed paint is actually impossible now, i don't exactly know what they meant by that but uh i'm definitely pleased with the result of these now Obviously, I could just leave this video here. I'm already six, seven minutes in. I've shown you guys what the flat color looks like. But I don't think that's going to be fair to the speed paint. I mean, the majority of us will not leave this color at just a solid block color. We will definitely do a little bit more work to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. I'm going to shade all three of the models. I'm going to use three different shades, all Army Painter paints as well, to keep it all in the same kind of grouping. And then I'm going to give them all a light dry brush at the end with the silver to catch the edges again. And we're going to see what kind of result we can get by adding just a tiny bit of extra work. As it stands though, I think these are pretty good. They definitely can be used in, in many projects across your, your armies. So Dark Tone is the one that I'm going to use for the metallic uh, silver. Obviously, we've all used a black wash over metallic silver before. And as you can see, it is not disappointing. It is very dark, but it's called Dark Tone, so... You know, kind of, kind of its its idea. But I, as you can see, you don't just don't let it pull up. You drag it away. You pull it into the areas where you want it to. And all you try and do is add that little bit of extra shading to this guy. Here it is applied to the entire piece. Definitely a nice silver metallic. Is it perfect? No. After the dry brush, will it make a huge difference? Well, I think it does. Flesh wash is my wash of choice for uh, goals. I actually use that in uh, contrast as well. If I'm shading over gold, I use a Reichland flesh shade. So. Uh, I don't know if you think I think I'm crazy, but flesh wash definitely has the right kind of tone, that really like rich warmth that I think gold uh, really plays into gold. So like I said, with the gold being so beautiful already, I was I was nervous that I was going to kind of ruin this job. But as soon as I started applying the flesh wash, I realized I had made a good call, a good decision. It definitely settled exactly how I wanted it to, and it uh, shaded the model exactly how I wanted it to. The tone shift is beautiful, definitely adding a little bit more warmth to it. Like I said, the gold was beautiful before, but it was very yellowy gold. Some gold are yellow and some gold are not, but I prefer a little bit of warmth to it. And that shade on top of that really did work a treat. Settled perfectly. And it's a beautiful place to add a little bit of highlighting to with a light dry brush. Soft tone was my choice of shade for the bronze color as well. Now I talk about a little bit at the end of this video, the fact that I'm not really a bronze connoisseur. I don't use, I don't like, my brain doesn't usually decide to use bronze for anything. So if there's anyone out there that does know more about bronze than I do, please feel free to comment below what you think of this bronze, pros and cons. I would love to know what your thoughts. And maybe I should try and do an army that has a lot of bronze so I can learn a little bit more about it. But yeah, soft tone works treat for this. Shaded it down nicely. When I started applying, I did worry that I was going to push it a little bit further away from the, the bronze coloring, but that didn't seem to happen. It definitely seemed to settle nicely when it dried. 
And plate mail metal is the army painter color I decided to use for dry brushing up these models. Now I did have three different golds out. I actually had greedy gold out and weapon bronze out that I was going to dry brush them all different um, to kind of match their colors. But I decided to stick with what I know, what, I, what I'm really comfortable with. And that's with, I like to highlight all metallics with silver at the end. I find it acts like a beautiful highlight. It just makes it pop a little bit more. So if I did yellow over, or if it gold over gold, it's not going to pop as much as, you know, a touch of silver. Maybe that's weird. It works for me and I think hopefully you'll see now with the gold and the bronze schemes that the silver does really work over it. As you can see this is adding a really nice layer to the metallic robot here, the silver one. Obviously covering up anywhere where it's been a little bit heavy with the shade or with the speed paint. And we're after getting an absolutely beautiful shade of silver. The Tin Man would be proud. As for the gold, as you can see I'm being quite light with the gold. All I want to do is catch the sharp edges of the piece. Just add some nice little uh, highlights to it. Okay, using a large flat dry brush, very soft bristled brush, which allows me to do that. As you can see, I'm following the contours of the model and keeping the flat side down. And all it does is, like I said, adding that sharp edge to all the parts that are raised on the model and giving me a really nice result. Like I said, I can definitely see myself using this gold a lot. If, if nothing else, this gold will be added into my arsenal of paints that I will use on a damn near constant basis after this. Look how cool this looks. Custody's army? Yes, please. And with the bronze, the same thing. You can see how the bronze dried up after that shade is in. And you can see it did, I think, do a really good job of shading it down and making it into a slightly warmer tone, which is what we wanted it to achieve. And once again, those harsh lines will come out from the dry brush of the silver, catching those edges and give us that exact kind of highlights that we want. And I'm not going to bother painting the rest of this miniature, the base or the, the cloak or the guns or anything like that. We're here to have a look at the Army Painter Speed Paint Metallics. And I think that we have, uh, I think we've achieved that so far. If you guys are keen to see what I would do with the rest of the Speed Paint Metallics, I will try my best to get my hands on them. Just let me know if that's something you want to see below. So here's the three final results of the uh, metallic speed paints that I've got my hands on. Silver, gold, and bronze. I mean, I think they're great. Now, obviously, my channel is called Mediocre Hobbies. The idea behind it is to get really fast and achievable ways of painting armies and getting them on the tabletop to make you feel good. I'm not a, you know, a showcase painter or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so a display painter. So maybe display painters can't see the use for these, but me as an army painter, yes. It's almost like the company's called Army Painter. Hmm. Here's a couple of high-res images of all of them to give you guys a kind of a better understanding of how they look as opposed to the camera. The camera always kind of tells porcupines about what things look like. Gold, front and back. Look at that gold. Very happy with that. And then some bronze. I'm going to just finish off with uh, three pictures, one of each with they have a white background to once again give you a little bit of a different angle and a different perspective of what they look like. Like I said, I would be very happy to go in and add a little bit more detail to all these guys, get the cloth painted up and then add them to a shelf. Quite proudly use them in a game. I don't know about you, but I think they turned out pretty well. Uh, the gold and the bronze especially. The silver's a little dark. I definitely think you can work with it though. I've been using it for actually all of my orc weaponry um, for my Orktober project. So all my orc boys, the weapons got base coated with that as their, their base coat. Um, and it's been working great for me, shading down and layering them up. So there's definitely a use for the metallic. The gold blew me away. The first coat of gold uh, across that Castellan robot was really stunning, really striking. Adding a shade and a light dry brush of silver. Beautiful, love it. And then the bronze is really good too. I generally don't use a lot of bronze paint myself. So if someone out there is a connoisseur of bronze uh, paints, please let me know in the comments what you think of this particular one. I don't have a lot of preference on it myself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about the Army Painter uh, metallic colors uh, and if they're something that you wanna try. Huge thank you to Proxy Wars once again for sponsoring today's video. If you want to check them out, like I said, there are links below. Speaking of links below, there's links below to my Patreon. If you want to get involved with that, um, you get access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week just for you guys. So there's two great benefits for getting involved. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the very end of the video. Make sure you give it a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.